Look, if you're here just wondering, hey, is the new summoner a good weapon? Or should you get this weapon whenever the adept role eventually makes its way into rotation, which is supposed to be this weekend? Guys, the new version of summoner is scary. And there's a variety of reasons why summoner is so scary right now. The new sandbox we're in, it's a six and a round per minute auto rifle. It deals solar damage, which is giving us radiant even inside of PvP just by landing precision shots. It's got new roles. It's got target lock. It's got origin traits. I found myself in dual with summer both on mouse and keyboard and on controller thinking to myself i can't lose challenge me if you dare no no that's a bold assessment but today guys we're going to be diving into this weapon yes there's a lot of stiff competition all over the place summoner here with the right role which i believe we got to narrow down through our testing with the right role absolutely shreds now we're going to be breaking this up into pve and pvp guys feel free to check out the timestamps if you're just looking for the associated god role for whatever it is that you play but let's start with the new perk pool that's found on this new summoner. In our third column, we have Hill Clip, Elemental Capacitor, Zen Moments, Subsistence, Dynamic Sway Reduction, Perpetual Motion, and Overflow. In our fourth column, we have Incandescence, Target Lock, Tap the Trigger, Kill Clip, Onslaught, Golden Tricorn, and Rampage. Now, we have lost a few perks from our summoner back in Season 16. Third column, we lost Moving Targets, Range Finder Heating Up, and Composer Reloader. In that fourth column, we lost Elemental Capacitor, but that essentially just moved to column three. We also lost Focus Fury, Multi Kill Clip, Harmony, and Wellspring. Now, to be honest with you guys, I'm okay with losing those traits. Maybe moving target would have been nice to have kept, but the new additions, in my opinion, are much better. Now, I'm going to start with the perk recommendations for PvE. I want to start with a trait that I know many of you probably never thought would be good, and that's Hill Clip. With update 7.3.5, guys, Hill Clip is no joke. It grants you Cure Times 2 now, and Cure Times 1 to nearby allies, which means inside of PvE, you yourself are getting 110 HP after getting a kill and then reloading and then you're giving your allies 60 hp now this is not necessarily like the best trait you could get on a summoner but i do want to bring up that heal clip is so much better if there is a weapon to be looking for heal clip on look no further than heliocentric which is a sidearm we did a review on not that long ago now if you are going to go the route of heal clip i would highly recommend pairing it with incandescent in that fourth column as the amount of solar synergy you can get here with the summoner is amazing with incandescent spreading scorch after defeating combatants also more powerful combatants and opposing guardians cause scorch in a larger radius that synergy here with solo 3.0 is beautiful it's explosion damage on kill hits car for 1708 damage and then proceeds to apply 30 scorch or 40 scorch if you have ember of ashes equipped again always a good perk but we need to talk about that other option onslaught this is present in column four and it is only one of two weapons that's in the 600 round per minute archetype that comes with onslaught one being ross which we did a review on and now summoner it states that final blows with this weapon and increases its rate of fire. Now this perk stacks up to three times with each kill up, increasing our rounds per minute, which lasts for four and a half seconds. Now we previously tested this on Ross Araga, which is also a 600 round per minute auto rifle. And based on our own calculations, for Summoner, at one stack of Onslaught, this increases our rounds per minute to 716. Two stacks is 842. And at three stacks, it breaks that 900 threshold at a whopping 960 rounds per minute. Now I do want to point out that just simply proc one stack of onslaught on a 600 round per minute auto rifle like summoner is already putting you in rapid fire auto rifle territory and good god at times three we're almost breaking a thousand rounds per minute do you burn through ammo pretty fast with onslaughts absolutely which is why subsistence is so good for pve players when pairing it with onslaughts as each kill reloads the magazine from reserves and this is about 17 percent of the map now overflow also exists in that third column we're picking up special or heavy ammo Will automatically load the weapon beyond normal capacity. Now, this is a great pick on Summoner, as at base, you're able to pump up those rounds to 85 shots. Personally, guys, I really like subsistence, but you really can't go wrong with either of those being paired with onslaughts. Now, are there other traits for my PvE players? Yeah, you've got target lock, which by the way, only got nerfed on SMGs. You've got rampage, you've got kill clip. Those are your more traditional damage perks. Golden Tricorn is also present here. Again, though, the thing that makes this weapon unique at least in my eyes is onslaught or an incandescent roll but this also takes us to our origin traits first we have alacrity this gives you increased reload stability aim assist and range when you're the last living member of your fire team or running solo this is fantastic for my people that are playing rumble as it pretty much stays procced at all times and it nets you a ton of benefits you get plus 20 range plus 20 stability plus 50 reload and plus 10 aim assist now this also transfers to pve if you're running lost sector solo 
solo or if you're doing solo dungeons fellas this is working alacrity is literally giving you all these benefits for you running solo now our other origin traits is one quiet moments where you grant yourself increased reload speed and handling when you exit combat not really a perk i would go for and then the final origin trait is wild card final blows of this weapon have a chance to create experimental sub munitions at the target's location this is a really good origin trait especially if you have a lot of ads that are running towards you no you don't get the stat bumps from alacrity but if you're running with a team this is fantastic as every single kill is going to drop you those telesta bolts and it actually increases depending on the enemy you take out really really solid here guys the way i look at both alacrity and wild card is that it really just changes depending on whether or not you're running with a fire team or you're running solo now what is my pv god roll guys there's a reason why we did a review on rasaraga onslaught is just too good on it but i'm gonna give you two pv god rolls that i want you to consider one is incandescent and heel clip i think the solar 3.0 synergy between those two traits is just too good there's so many ways you can lean into this you could proc ember benevolence with heel clip we're applying restoration cure radiant to allies grants increased grenade melee and class ability regeneration guys this is a 400 increase in base grenade melee and class ability regeneration which lasts for six seconds all you have to do is grant cure to your allies and then we have incandescence which synergizes with a ton of things but you can actually dip into this further with ember of searing which states that defeating scorched targets grants melee energy and creates a fire sprite which means any kill you get on a scorched enemy is granting you at least eight percent melee energy which scales with enemy rank topping out at 25 percent of your melee on top of that fire sprites grants us 12.5 percent grenade energy and then you got ember singeing where you get 300 percent increase your class ability regeneration when you scorch targets what this really nets you with a single roll of incandescent and heal clip on summoner is the ability to give yourself extremely fast regeneration for your melee grenade and your class ability on top of benefiting your teammates now this isn't the only weapon that rolls with this combination this defiant actually rolls with heal clip and incandescent and it's craftable so you can get enhanced heal clip and enhanced incandescent now enhanced heal clip doesn't necessarily grant you much outside of extra time before needing to reload after getting that kill but enhanced incandescent increases our scorch stacks which is especially nice with ember of ashes as that increases our scorch stacks to 45. the problem with the abyss of Viant is that it's at 360 and people either love that archetype or they absolutely hate it but i actually like 600s inside of pv and i think summoner is worth using especially considering we have overload auto rifles this season now the other god role would really be overflow onslaught or subsistence onslaught tag on a mag perk and fellas you'll be shredding you do something like a pendant mag which will crank up our magazine to 47. now why are we talking about this auto rifle so much for pve cross isn't this just a pvp weapon well the reason why solar is so good this season is because of our artifacts which by the way applies to pvp as well we have kindling trigger which causes our solar weapons to apply scorch to unscorched combatants when we are radiant we have flint striker where rapid solar weapon precision hits and rapid solar weapon final blows grants us radiance this is why summoner here is able to self-proc radiant for itself we have torch where while we are radiant you deal increased weapon damage to combatants that are affected by strand and stasis debuffs this is fantastic if you're rocking like a riptide or a scatter signal with slice you could self-proc those debuffs for yourself we have heart of the flame we're casting solar supers grants nearby allies radiant and increases the damage of your super for nearby allies you've got revitalize the glass we're causing damage with the solar ability weakens champions and then raise the precision where solar precision fighting blows while radiant causes combatants to ignite the point is guys is that summoner is a weapon worth considering for pve i think this season the hill clip incandescent combo is so good because of our artifact and you compare it with the solar subclass to really amp things up but beyond that point that onslaught role that's what makes rasa rago so unique but you have it present right here on summoner so guys that is our pve review now let's talk pvp because we're in a new sandbox and our health pools are essentially between 216 and 230 things have changed a lot optimum time to kills are pretty much still the same but if i'm throwing damage values out at this point to you and they sound confusing it's because we're in the new sandbox let me just say though just like i stated above summoner there were times in duels that i felt like i could not lose now i played on mouse and keyboard and i did enjoy it on mouse and keyboard but let me just say i think i prefer 450s on mouse and keyboard prosecutor is one we just recently reviewed it feels phenomenal and it can roll with things like keep away and target lock summoner can also roll with target lock which again like we mentioned above target lock was only nerfed on smgs 
on auto rifles, it is still a very good perk. Summoner here as a 600 round per minute auto rifle is taking full advantage of it. Now I'm gonna go over some damage values real quick. In this new sandbox, we're doing 27 damage per crit and 16 damage per body. Now time to kill wise. We're still sitting at an optimal time to kill of 0.8 seconds from tier 10 resilience all the way down. Now at tier 10, this requires nine crits, but from tier nine to tier two, this requires eight crits, one body. Then from tier one, you can actually squeeze out seven crits in two body and still get that 0.8 time to kill value. Now 0.8 is really good. However, one of the biggest drawbacks to 600s is its range. At base, Summoner hits at 25.2 meters, substantially less range than when 600 round per minute auto rifles were the meta. If you remember way back when, when Gnawing Hunger was the meta, Hard Light was the meta. Granted, Hard Light was a weird case because it had infinite range at one time. Now a max range roll, say you roll with a summoner that has 70 range, that reaches up to 31.2 meters. And there are ways to influence that, right? Range masterwork, maybe you've got full bore, which I wouldn't recommend. 70 range though is the max. Granted, when you include alacrity, that will increase our range up to 90, which is pretty impressive. We're talking 35.2 meters. This is why things like alacrity inside of rumble is so good. It just gives you 20 range, 20 stability, and plus 10 aim assist. And then on top of that, if you were to take full board, a range boosting magazine option, a range masterwork, and an adept range mod. Well, hell, fellas, we're talking like upwards of 37 meters. More specifically, an adept summoner with max range, that being 100 range with alacrity, would reach up to 37.2 meters. Now that is wild. Would I recommend going full board? No. I just don't like the negative 10 stability or the negative five handling. But I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I can't help but sit back and admire the stat monster that summoner can be here, especially in its adept form. When we masterwork that weapon and we're bumping up all those stats and when we throw in alacrity there, oh my gosh. We're not even playing with this weapon right now in this gameplay in its final form yet. And yet look at it, it's shredding. Now I need to bring up the two roles I really wanted to try. I did use Onslaught inside of PVP and let me just say, I enjoy Onslaught when it comes to 6v6. I think it's much easier to proc. You've got more targets to take advantage of. And yeah, it works. With every increase to our rounds per minute, we're seeing substantial drops in time to kill. At one stack, 0.67 seconds. At two stacks, 0.57 seconds. Three stacks, 0.5 seconds. Is it sexy to look at? You damn right it is. On top of that, we have artifact perks that also work here. Just like we mentioned in our PVE review, perks like Flint Striker works inside of PVP, where rapid solar weapon precision hits and rapid solar weapon final blows will grant you radiance. Guys, you start stacking this with Solar 3.0 and you take advantage of Ember of Solace, which increases that duration. Ember of Empyrean, where Solar Weapon or Ability Final Blows extends that duration of Restoration and Radiant. You can run around here with Summoner, self-proc Radiance, and literally keep Radiance going. We're talking increasing your crit damage to 30, your body shot damage to 17. Now this means with Radiant being propped, you're able to get a kill on Guardians, Tier 10 Resilience, to Tier 7 in 8 crits at a whopping 0.7 seconds. And from six resilience and below, you can get the kill in seven crits in one body in 0.7 seconds. This beautifully synergizes with every trait, including that of Onslaught. And it's a beautiful thing to behold inside of 6v6. But in terms of 1v1s, target lock was disgusting. For six of your shots, you will receive no buff from target lock. But again, it's successive hits after scoring 12.5% of the magazine capacity that it would then grant you that damage bump. Now it's a small bump inside of PvP in comparison to PvE, but it's enough. For instance, our crit damage goes from 27 to 30. Our body shot damage goes from 16 to 17. Now, what does that mean? Time to kill wise, things don't really change until tier six resilience. For instance, tier 10, the tier nine resilience, you could still get the kill in 0.8 seconds in eight crits in one body. At tier eight resilience to tier seven, you can get the kill in seven crits and two body shots. But from tier six and below, you can get the kill in eight crits, 0.7 seconds. Now, before I lose you, we need to talk about Radiant paired with target lock. You see, we just talk about Radiant with Onslaught, which is obviously disgusting. But the same thing here with Radiant, that crit buff with target lock goes to 33 and that body shot damage goes to 19. Now, what does that mean? From tier 10 resilience to tier two, you can get the kill in 0.7 seconds and seven crits in one body. And 
And then from tier one, you can get the kill in six crits and two body, still at 0.7 seconds. The main takeaway, guys, is that Summoner gets stronger the longer you duel with it. And look, if you want to go a step further, you can rock out things like Frosties, you can do Acrobat's Dodge, you can self-proc just by using your class ability and give yourself Radiance, and then just continue chaining these things for as long as you want, considering it's a solar weapon. But even if you didn't do those things, as I'm just sitting here playing with my target lock summoner on just a time, I'm self-proccing Radiant for myself. Every duel I enter afterwards, guys, I felt like I couldn't lose, even against SMGs, which boils down to the real question. What trait should you pair with a target lock summoner? Guys, I played with two traits extensively. One was Zim Moments. The other one is Dynamic Sway Reduction. Now, Dynamic Sway Reduction improves accuracy and stability while continuously holding down the trigger. There's lots of benefits here, guys. And if you were to sit there and lay on the trigger with Dynamic Sway, you could see it really consolidate your shots. But then we have Zim Moment, where causing damage with the weapon reduces recoil and flinch over time. At one time, I would have hands down said Dynamic Sway is the way to go. But since Zim Moment has been buffed to be more noticeable on mouse keyboard and when I've gone back and forth between both inputs. Listen guys, this role I'm using here on Summoner, this Zim Moment role on my own account, this is not a good role in my opinion. Like it's all right, but its stats leave a lot of room to be desired. But Zim Moment literally doesn't care. It says, hey, you land one shot and we got you. We will take care of the rest, which is perfect for target lock. When it comes to landing those consecutive crits, I felt Zim Moment was helping me more with that than Dynamic Sway. And believe me, this sounds wrong coming from it, because in the past, I've sworn up and down that Dynamic Sway is the way to go. And big shout out to Jubber here for allowing me to play with his role. Dynamic is nice. Zim Moment, though, just felt better. So the god role for me inside of PvP, guys, would be Zim Moment with either Onslaught, if you're playing 6v6, or target lock. Now, could you roll Parks like Kill Clip? Yeah. And look, if target lock ends up getting nerfed, you have options. You've got tap the trigger, which helps immediately in those gunfights. You could do like a tap the trigger, Zim moment roll. One helping you on the front end. And as soon as you get damage going, Zim moment takes care of the rest. But I think if target lock was to get nerfed tomorrow, I would probably just go with an onslaught roll. It's just too much fun. All around guys, this is a very solid auto rifle. Much better than I expected. I've had a number of gun roll summoners over the years. And let me just say, I didn't really care for summoner. Even during the 600 round in an auto rifle meta, I didn't even care for Summoner then. I preferred Hard Lights. I also loved Gnawing Hunger, but not really Summoner. It just didn't sit right with me. But with this new set of perks, this new origin traits, that Zim Moment target lock combo, guys, I'm liking this. And I'm liking it a lot. In this new sandbox, I think you're going to enjoy the Summoner. Now, I do think the Adept version, which should be dropping this weekend, is going to clear this base version. The stat bumps are going to make it a stat monster, which is why I do suggest getting the Adept version when it does drop. Now, for my players that don't want to play trials i do want to point out passage of persistence is in the game it's really really nice you pick it up you play games if you get to seven wins you get an adept weapon if you lose a game it's all right it just erases one of your wins the only downside is if you start the card off with a loss say you lose your first game it will flaw your card therefore you won't get an adept weapon and the other downside is if you get error coded throughout the card that will also flaw your card but in terms of like guaranteeing you an adept weapon passage of persistence is really Really nice guys and I would highly advise getting it for my folks that don't want to stress getting to the lighthouse but just want the adept weapon so guys that is our complete review of the summoner I very much enjoyed this weapon it was addicting you know it's a good weapon when I have to stop myself and say all right cross we gotta go review this thing like I'm literally playing with it and I'm like man I just want to keep playing right now with the summoner the hell with the review but guys get your hands on this weapon fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right Right.